Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to talk about the Poco X3 GT. This device was announced last week and I am still trying to figure out how was Poco able to do this, putting all of these features. I'm talking about a large 6.6 .6 inch display, full HD at 120 Hertz, stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, a 5000 milliampere battery with a 67, uh, 67 watt charger in the box. Not only that, all of this is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 1100 chipset. And again, all starting at $299. So how did Poco do this? And where are the, I would say the tailoring of this device where it basically makes it such a great budget bang for the buck type of an experience. This is TK and this is the Poco X3 GT. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here's the package. It's pretty simple. We got a clear case cover to cover our device, of course, a USB type A to USB type C cable to be able to use the 67 watt charger that's again included in the box. And this will be able to charge our 5000 milliampere battery that's built in. There's no wireless charging, but honestly, at these speeds, you don't really need wireless charging. You're able to top off as much as you want as fast as possible. And then, of course, lastly, we have uh, the Poco X3 GT. Now, the model that I have here is the A to 56. There's two different models, 8128 and 8256. The 256 model is the one that takes you up to $329, but $299 gets you in with 8 gigs and of course 128. Now, one thing I want to mention to you guys, as far as the actual uh, configuration, we have a 2.5D glass on the back. So this is not plastic, this is glass. But when we switch it over to the front, we have a 6.6 .6 inch full HD plus. Uh, this is a basically a 120 Hertz refresh rate, 240 Hertz touch sampling. And this is obviously powered by a MIUI 12.5. Uh, the actual display on the front has Gorilla Glass Victus on it, so definitely much more stronger glass on the front. Uh, no curvature, it's pretty much flat. A power button that's uh, supporting as well as the fingerprint sensor here, so not in display on the side, which again, I feel like it actually is the right uh, solution. So if we press it half press, you can see here, and I press it again, it unlocks quite quickly. Volume rocker on the top, top firing speaker that's married to the bottom one to match to give us that Dolby Atmos stereo. Of course, the IR blaster and a microphone. Last but not least on the bottom, bottom firing speaker, USB-C, and uh, here we have the secondary microphone. On the left side, we have the SIM tray here supporting two SIM card with 5G. Again, the MediaTek uh, 1100 Dimensity here is the one powering this entire system and gives us the ability of getting that type of technology. On the front, we have a 16 megapixel sensor that's going to be the front facing camera capable of shooting 1080p 30 frames per second video. On the back, we have a triple camera setup. The primary shooter is the 64 megapixel sensor. We have an 8 megapixel ultra ride and then, of course, a 2 megapixel, uh, basically a macro lens. And of course, dual tone LED flash with laser autofocusing. Uh, no wireless charging, as I mentioned, but we do have a very unique design. What I mean by this, if you can actually see it right there, you can notice here there's more of a sparkling effect that's on the bottom, gradually changing towards the top. Unfortunately, definitely a fingerprint magnet, as you can see here, and of course, a uh, dust magnet. So I definitely recommend you using the case that I include with you in the box. Now, you'll notice that I've been using the Goku uh, Ultra Instinct wallpaper. And what I love about this is even though I have it on the lock, on the lock screen, Unlocking the device takes it back and it's so quick that you don't even notice the difference. Uh, UI elements on the left, we have the Google feed on the right, just basically more apps. You can swipe up and get applications. Same thing that we've seen before with Poco launchers. Uh, we have the categories pretty much organized there. But one of the best features I like is that the search bar is at the bottom. Because of one-handed functionality, whenever you're using your phone, you want to click the search bar and search whichever app you want to search. And it works quite nicely. A lot of launchers on the market right now, they put the search bar at the top, but most of us can't reach the top because that just makes it into a two-hand experience. Very nice, very easy. Um, I do have support, uh, well, they do have support for gestures, but I just don't have them turned on right now. Uh, recent application, typical to what we've seen with Poco launchers in the past. We have the ability of doing the cleaner, security, uh, uh, security scan here, deep clean and manage application. So those are things that you're able to do, but typical. Now, this does include the standard suite of applications we typically get with Poco devices, and you're able to uninstall whichever ones you don't need or you don't want to use. We have theme support, and of course, in the settings section, we jump into about, again, MIUI 12.5.2 latest edition. The 256 model that I have here, this is the Poco X3 GT. And of course, this is running on top of Android 11. As far as customizations and options, uh, we have lock screen co configuration display, as I mentioned to you guys. You have dark theme, light mode, and of course, you have the ability of setting up the color scheme. The refresh rate, you have the ability of turning on 60 or 120 adaptive. Now, adaptive means that it actually fluctuates between 30, 60, 90, and 120 to give you the best experience when needed. So it doesn't actually stay at 120 all the time. It matches the best resolution based on the apps that you're using. Uh, 
you're also able to customize obviously the full, full screen mode, VR mode, text size, and of course under sound, we're able to jump in and configure the Dolby Atmos, which is also really nice. So under sound effects, we jump in, we have Dolby Atmos, you can configure it, graphic EQ, all of the different options that you'd like to set up. And one of the things I really like about this is the fact that we have a separate speaker from the earpiece at the top. They're not integrated into the same. So we're not looking at a different experience from the top earpiece to the bottom one. It is basically a situation where they're facing away from us, so they're not front facing. But if we're holding the phone this way when we're consuming content, the beauty about this is our hand ends up becoming more of an echo chamber and the sound ends up basically bouncing back and hitting directly towards us. So the experience is pretty good. If you have it on the table, you definitely may want to go a little bit higher on the volume. One of the things that we got used to from the MIUI implementation here is that if we swipe from the left, we have the notification panel. But if I swipe from the right, I have the uh, basically the toggles directly implemented here. So. Um, big buttons, very easy to customize. You can open them up, go in there and customize all the additional ones. Uh, we do have nearby sharing. NFC is supported on this model. Screen recorder, uh, basically in you know, a floating window, different experiences and depending on the notification that you're getting. Uh, I do have, and I did actually test it out in the US on T-Mobile. One of the things I will say, although the phone did show 5G, I wasn't actually connecting to 5G. So when I checked my results, I did actually get pretty decent connections. Uh, but overall, I was getting actually an LTE connection. So you can actually see the, the configuration here. It says T-Mobile LTE, although the phone actually said at the time 5G. So 53 down, 50 up, it's actually pretty decent. Uh, and your usage may be different if you're trying to import this because it has to be supported in your area. So I tested out it with T-Mobile in the Los Angeles area. Uh, just make sure to check the bands before you, uh, if, you, if you're thinking about committing and purchasing this device. We'll get a chance to jump in into the pictures. Let me want to take you guys real quick into the Geekbench score. I ran a Geekbench score on this and I did run it within the game mode, uh, meaning I allowed the system to perform at the best possible during that experience. So if we jump into history, uh, I was able to actually get 712 for single core and about 3000 for multi-core. And if we actually have to kind of look into it a little bit, uh, this is pretty basically in, in sync with uh, between the 855 and the 865 experience uh, when we talk about performance. So pretty decent, still pretty good. And of course, under the compute, I was able to get 47, 44. Um, overall performance though, when you're when using it on the daily, realistically, we don't notice the differences and the capabilities uh, that in you know, any hindering of that. The 855 is a very powerful processor and the Dimensity 1100, of course, also supports that. Now, when we jump into the cameras, this is where we start seeing some limitations, but it's again, still a, a great experience. You have photo, video, pro mode, of course, as we have before, portrait mode. And of course, we have the additional options of log, slow motion, uh, time-lapse, panorama, night mode. All of those are still pretty much present. And you can edit the order that you have them in here. One thing I will say, though, is the front-facing camera is capped at 1080p, 30 frames per second. So for video, if I switch over to the front, I'll give it a second, and I'll hit the option here. All I have is 1080p, 30, or 720 per uh, 30. If we switch it over to the back facing sensor, this gets a little bit different depending on what you're trying to use. We have 4K30 as the maximum resolution, although anytime you turn on any functions, meaning if I jump into 4K30, but I want to turn on the AI camera, it jumps back into 720. If I want to turn off uh, AI camera, go back in here, let's say I want to go to movie frame, that stays at 4K. Uh, of course, if you jump into macro, that's going to use the secondary lens that we have there. But what I'm trying to say is if you try to go to the wide angle lens, it jumps back to 1080p30. If you go into the macro, same thing. Uh, the main thing I want to basically say is 4K30 is going to be the best on the back, 1080p30 is on the front. Let me give you guys a quick sample on those cameras and audio. So we're going to start off with the front facing camera here and the experience is pretty much capped at 1080p 30 frames per second. It's typical to what we've seen with some of the other uh, brands or at other Poco phones that we've seen before. So 1080p 30 is going to be the maximum on the front, but when we switch over to the back facing sensor, using the 64 megapixel sensor on the back, we're able to go all the way up to 4K 30 frames per second. Now, there are different modes that you're able to jump into. Just keep in mind that if you do try to change anything there, uh, specifically like even going to the, uh, the wide angle lens camera, you're going to drop down the, uh, back to 1080p. So 4K 30 on the primary shooter, the 64 megapixel sensor, which I feel like will also give you the best video possible on this device. And as you saw there, it's actually pretty decent. You, you do have some options to be able to use the cameras and get the full benefit. Uh, the 64 megapixel obviously is going to be the best performer that you have on the back facing side. Uh, just to keep in mind for best video, that's going to be the best area. And one of the things honestly I didn't realize till I started using is, is that the reflectiveness of the back helps with the framing of the video. So when you're looking at yourself, when you're recording yourself with the back facing sensor, you can actually see and basically kind of position yourself based on the reflection and it gets a little bit easier to record. Uh, now, of course, we want to be able to test out those stereo speakers with Dolby configuration. As the usual, we use the same song, Alex Grindo Jumbo by NCS Release. And I actually have it right at the, top, uh, at the drop. And I went ahead and go 100% on this one. Check it out. Now, 
Now, as you saw there, as I put my hands down, the sound kind of became a little bit lower. And as I put it back up in here, it actually does permeate and it does bounce back off of my hand and it sounds a lot louder. So for best experience, if you're watching content and you want to watch them, uh, of course, you can pinch and zoom into YouTube. 1080p is going to be the maximum resolution since this is technically a 1080p panel. And of course, just make sure you hold it this way, set up your volume and you're pretty much set to go. Uh, they do include an adapter in the box for a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in case you want to use a headphone jack and that's going to be connected obviously at the bottom. But I feel like this is still a pretty good decent experience and the sound sounds pretty good. Okay, now I'm pretty sure you guys want to see exactly how the gaming capabilities on here. I think I did get a few questions when we were doing the unboxing last week. Is basically how does PUBG perform and how does basically you know, Genshin Impact or Call of Duty. So I do have Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile. Uh, there's a few games installed in here as well. I do have PUBG installed and Overall, the Dimensity 1100 does not disappoint. So we're gonna jump in real quick. Uh, let me show you guys again some of the options that we have in here. So as you notice right there, Game Turbo uh, automatically turns on. You swipe it from the top. You have access to the standard uh, menu. This is typical to what we've seen in the past from Poco launchers. And let me go ahead and reduce the volume a little bit so that we don't get a lot of background. Um, but overall, you're able to record your, uh, your videos. And I did record a few gaming sessions that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today, of course, to show you guys how does this actually perform. But when it comes down to PUBG Mobile, let me just go into the settings. We'll go into the graphics real quick. The best resolution that you're going to get here is HDR and Ultra, and I'm able to go to Colorful. If you want to get the best frame rate, you do need to jump back to Smooth, and that gets you into the Extreme. So best frame rate, you do, you're do you able to jump into Extreme with Smooth, but if you want to get best quality image with best frame rate at the same time, Ultra and HDR is going to be the best here. Uh, next thing, of course, we're going to go ahead and jump in, give you guys a few samples of the gaming experience on the Poco X3 GT. Contact with enemy. Enemy contact. Hostiles have captured the hard point. Target in hard point contested. Hard point identified. Down. Friendly hunter killer drone deployed. Hard point lost. Predator Inside. missile inbound. As you can see here, the experience that we have here is pretty much, I would say, more closer to the $500 price range. So the fact that it's coming in at $299 or starting at $299 is definitely very nice. You're getting a lot for what they're offering for, and I feel like Poco is definitely still trying to go for that flagship killer experience, giving us more for less. So large display, large battery, a great processor, high refresh rate, adaptive high refresh rate uh, on this um, Gorilla Glass Victus on the display on the front as well, and a 67 watt charger that's included in the box. 
Everything that you need to get started on this device works great and is included. Um, it does work in the US, so the overall performance that you're getting here is more like a 4G LTE experience than a 5G connectivity. But then again, 4G LTE is not exactly very slow. It's actually pretty decent, considering now that uh, the networks are basically starting to balance off. There's more people on the 5G, so less people are sitting on just 4G LTE. So the congestion on both sides, it's actually getting pretty good. Um, overall, if I had to recommend this, I would definitely say yes, definitely. At $299, it's very hard to actually beat some of the specifications that we're getting here. The MediaTek Dimensity 1100 is a very powerful processor. Again, more around the 855, 865 experience, but again, with 5G connectivity in 2021. So between the features and the price point, I think it's very hard not to recommend a smartphone like this to anybody looking to get it. Uh, two different models, an 8128 and an 8256, uh, running the latest MIUI 12.5 with Android 11. And of course, and of course just, you know, stereo speakers, everything that you're looking for uh, from what Poco offers is pretty much ca captured here. Uh, the camera experience, again, the 64 megapixel sensor camera on the back is going to be pretty much the best camera you can take pictures with it. Uh, front facing and back facing portrait imagery looks pretty decent. Uh, and again, you're able to basically compose your subjects and get pretty decent pictures. And there are a lot of modes to cover. Just be aware that if you jump out of the standard mode on the back sensor, uh, you do need to double check what is the resolution that your video drops because it doesn't actually tell you. So if you switch over to the ultra wide, you're pretty much capped at 1080. But if you want to go to the full 64 megapixel sensor usage, it's going to be 4K30. And then again, that's due to the um, Dimensity 1100. So hopefully in the future, we'll be able to start seeing 4K60 and 8K on Dimensity chipsets. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of the X3 GT? Are you as excited about this device as much as I am? And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a great day.